So I guess it's time for magic. I thought because of the kind of crazy place the whole world is in right now with Ukraine and still the pandemic rages on, I'd bring something really light to us. Fairy magic. Fairy magic. Now, I'm going to give you my very simple and oversimplified perspective on it. And if you talk to 12 different people, you are, of course, going to get 12 different versions of what fairies and fairy magic are. But I'm going to go to the simplest bring them into your life way because it is a witchcraft path in itself. There's, you know, it, uh, the dearest friend of mine and he's been on the show. And if you really want to get into fairy magic in a, in a magical way, deep Orion Foxwood, he's got a fairy seer school. He's got beautiful books on, on fairy magic and the fairy path. But for me, I'm just saying, bring a little fairy into your life. Um, again, whether you believe they're little, Tinkerbell things with wings and little people that fly around on your flowers or the energy of fairy, it doesn't matter. Fairies bring levity and lightness and laughter and joy into your life. And, and who doesn't need a little bit of that right now? So how do you bring in fairies, you say? Well, actually, they like greenery a lot. <laughs> so if you have any kind, if you're lucky enough to have a yard or a garden or even a little patio. And even if you don't have a little patio, a yard or a put a little potted plant in your little kitchen window on the inside, invite the fairies in. Fairies like shiny things. They like marbles and crystals and glitter of every kind. They like garden balls and statues. I mean, I drive by all the time. How many people have little fairy statues out front? I do. Well, actually out back. Um, it brings this magic. And when you start inviting the energy of fairy or the fae themselves into your yard, your flowers will flourish. You will bring in more butterflies. You will bring in more dragonflies. You will bring in more hummingbirds. It's kind of amazing how they work. So how do you see fairies, you say? Well, Fairies live at the edge. They're very tricky. They're tricky, tricky, tricky. Um, you got to be careful in working on them. And, and you could read a billion scary warning stories about fairies, about the fae. But basically, they're just magical party little things. Um, but they live at the edge, the edge of day, the edge of night. So sunrise, sunset, go out into your garden or to a park, walk down the street. Look at the sparkle in the trees. They live at the edge. They live at the edge of the path. They live at the edge of the garden, the edge of the forest. So edge of day, edge of night, edge of the path, edge of the pond, edge of wherever, because they're that kind of little crossroads fairy magic. Um, so invite them into your yard. If you want to give them a little tiny fairy statue, great. They're so magical. Um, they make wishes. They do great things. A few years back, my husband and I, their day, by the way, is May 1st, Beltane, which is the opposite of Halloween, six months away, when the veil is very thin because it's celebrating the debt. This, it's May 1st. The veil is thin because the fairies are holding it up, not a bunch of scary ghosts and things. The fairies are holding up. So we celebrate with maypole dancing and flowers and May flowers that we bring. Um, it's it's a time of celebration. We, we made it through the winter if we go back into the old ways of stuff. Spring has come. There's life. There's food. Um, so the night before, when the veil is very thin, my husband and I, the drummer, he's not an overly spiritual guy, but he kind of gets what I do. We went down deep into my yard, and I had these little cups. They had like six little containers, like six little wells. And in each of the shape of a daisy, how fairy perfect. So I decided, or we decided, we'd make a wish with each of these six little cups. So with each wish, we gave them an offering of dark, beautiful honey and white cream. So we poured a little honey and cream and kind of mixed up and made this beautiful cappuccino-y like mixture in these six little holes in the beautiful fairy. And with each one, it was like world peace or a new car or whatever it was. We made these wishes for the fae. And so we left it there deep in the yard on the little table. Nobody knew it was there. Nobody would have came as an offering. Um, we went upstairs. First thing next morning, I go down. I wanted to see if the fairies drank all the, the milk and the cream. Typical fairy. They separated the milk and cream. Now, three of the little containers had only honey. It was dark. It was the dark honey color. Three had only cream. It was pure white again. I don't know how they did it, but it seems like such a fairy 
scary thing to do. Next time, I guess I will keep them in separate things. But it showed that they they took them, they played with them, they take took the gift and then did the fairy thing that they would do with them. Um, listen for the magic. Listen for the laughter that they bring, the music that they'll bring into your life. Now, sort of like kids, they can get a little rambunctious and they can get a little overzealous sometimes. And because they do like shiny, shiny things, they might steal your earrings or your keys and your little necklace. And you're probably sitting there going, that's what happened. Yep, the Fae took it. But they'll give them back almost always. What you have to do is bribe them. <laughs> Who's about bribing? Um, again, offer them some honey, some cream, some whiskey perhaps, a, a little thing of marbles or some glitter or some rhinestones or some sequins. Um, I just say, if you give me back my earrings, well, here's for this. Here's an offering for you now. And amazingly, pretty much every time, you will find that missing keys, earrings, whatever, and the exact place you thought you left it, but the exact place you looked 15 times and it wasn't there. And now it's there. Or you're going to find it in a place that you would absolutely never have put it. Like, why are my earrings in my sock? That's the fae, but bring them into your life. If you want more levity, if you want more laughter, and speaking of laughter, you guys, that is the most protective, most healing, most magical thing that we, these little human bodies can do. Laugh. Laugh when you're sad. Laugh when you're down. Laugh when you make a fool of yourself. Laugh when you're scared because there's actually magic behind the magic. Ha, ha, ha. When... You've heard me talk about before the importance of breath. The breath coming out is our life force. It's our pneuma. The moisture in our breath is our free will. And the vowel that you kind of get with a laugh, ha, 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 whatever that is, he, 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 is a vowel. That's the, that's the opening up of your whole thought pattern. It's what all sacred words are vowels, like amen and om and hey, uh, hi, oh, uh, whoo. So laugh and bring in the fey. It's a rough world. It's a scary world, but we're going to get through it. So why not a little winged magic to make it a lot much easier?